Afterward, a global spring. Eight young anti-nuclear activists set up a soup kitchen outside the March 26, 1981 stockholders meeting of the First National Bank of Boston in an effort to stop Seabrook Nuclear Power Station. It was a pleasant early spring day. Ronald Reagan had just come to power, promising to dismantle many of programs that benefited average Americans. He would cut social services and transfer the nation's resources to his wealthy friends. We were attempting to build popular support against his economic and political policies, which included investment in nuclear energy and weapons, Seabrook being our local example. We hoped our street theater would encourage a popular campaign that would cause the board of directors to end their policy of investing their depositors' money on risky and dangerous projects. During our years of protesting, we learned that many of the board members of the Bank of Boston were also sitting on the board of Babcock and Wilcox, a company that was building Seabrook Nuclear Power Station, and that many of the same men also sat on the board of the Public Service Company of New Hampshire that was buying the power station. These bankers also profited from the nuclear weapons industry by sitting on the boards of Raytheon Missile Systems, Lockheed Martin, and others. We believe that these policies of lending themselves billions of dollars with little public oversight was reminiscent of the banking practices lead to the hardships of the Great Depression in the 1930s. We decided to make that point visible by dressing as hobos and setting up a soup line outside the annual stockholders meeting. I trimmed produce at an organic grocery and discarded several cases of vegetables every morning, so sharing a huge pot of soup was an easy vehicle to dramatize our protest. As we prepared the kettle of tasty soup, we became concerned that there would not be enough people participating to represent a Depression-era soup line and that much of it could go to waste. So I went down to the only shelter I knew, the Pine Street Inn, and told the assembled homeless that we were planning a protest at noon outside the Federal Reserve Bank at South Station and would be providing free food to everyone that participated. They responded with excitement about the protest. Wow, a protest like the 60s sounds good, one man told me. Even so, we were surprised when over 50 people showed up to partake of the first food, not bombs meal. 30 years later, Aussie am about to finish writing this book. The world is facing the most lethal nuclear disaster since the atomic bombings of Japan. The Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power station continues to release lethal levels of radiation. The global economy is in crisis due to the same short-sighted banking policies we were protesting in 1981. Experts might be calling it a great recession, but for billions of people it feels more like a great depression. Executives lobbied for deregulation, sold bad mortgages, paid no taxes, laid off millions of workers, reaped the profits, and let the economy collapse. Things are so turbulent that by the time you read this, the corporate media may even be reporting that we are in a Great Depression. Food prices are increasing at the fastest pace experienced in over 30 years as speculators move to invest in commodities. The United Nations and Oxfam reported food prices will double in the next 20 years. This too may be old news at publication time. The world started to change when a young Tunisian produce worker, Tarek al Tayeb Mohamed Bouazizi, set himself on fire on December 17, 2010, fed up by police abuse and the high price of food. His death sparked waves of uprisings. The revolt spread from Tunisia and Egypt, Oman, Libya, Bahrain, Yemen, Algeria and Morocco, and to the rest of the world. British Prime Minister David Cameron's government was in crisis due to its corrupt relationship with Rupert Murdoch's News Corporation. One week, the police are helping Britain's corporate and government leaders loot the public, and the next week, the police are killing an unarmed young worker named Mark Duggan in the Tottenham district of London sparking riots all over England. While England burned, Wall Street crashed. From Tunisia to the United Kingdom, people are clearly fed up with a system that makes it increasingly difficult to survive. There is an urgent desire to bring democracy, dignity, basic necessities, and some sanity to our world. The richest 2% already own over half the world's wealth and resources. The wealthy are seeking to squeeze every last cent out of an increasingly desperate people. Their greed is endless, even though nearly a billion people go hungry each day. During the years it took for me to write this book, we experienced an unprecedented wave of disasters. A complacent public let the billionaires lead us to this point. Too many of us bought their products and their philosophies and now we are paying, paying with our future. The top 2% must be laughing all the way to their gated communities in Dubai. The owners of BP continue to live in splendor after one of the world's worst oil blowouts. Military contractors looted their national treasuries as world leaders start one war after another just for profit. Wall Street executives plunged millions of people into unemployment, homelessness, and hunger, while the taxpayers bail out the rich so they can maintain their opulence. Funding for social security, healthcare, education, and all other social services are cut and given to the very wealthy people responsible for destroying our economy, democracy, and environment. We are becoming a world of consumers without money, hungry for peace 151, shelter, food, or dignity. What does our future have in store for us? Constant war, radioactive fallout, oil-covered oceans, minimum wage jobs, toxic food, ecological crisis, global corporate downsizing, unaffordable medical services, or debilitating college tuition hikes? Will we sit and wait? Or will we have enough self-respect to join the others, rise up, and start to create a future where we can feel both safe and proud? While ladling soup outside the stockholders' meeting in 1981, we were conceived that we could face a future of nuclear disasters, environmental catastrophes, and a global economic collapse. We urged those visiting our first Food Not Bombs meal to join us in building resistance to the policies that could bring ruin to our world. Our literature and speech invited them to withhold their support of what we call the culture of death 
and join us in transforming society. We thought that by working together, practicing the democracy of consensus to make decisions, and sowing a spirit of hope and abundance by sharing a nearly inexhaustible quantity of tasty organic food, we could have some influence in our community. 30 years later, it is clear that our concerns were well-founded and the need for change couldn't be more urgent. We could not have predicted that our tiny theatrical soup line would ultimately spring up on hundreds of streetcomers and parks all over the world, continuing to share healthy vegan meals, encouraging conversation and solutions to the same issues we faced on that first sunny March day in 1981. 30 years later, I would find myself delivering food to Occupy Boston, staffing a literature table a few feet from where we had shared our first meal. I was greeted by food, not bombs, activists from as far away as South Africa, highlighting the progress of 30 years of activism. Three decades later, the theater has become more reality than theater with many more actors seeking to end their own painful hunger rushing to participate, having been forced into poverty or inspired to insurrection by the untenable conditions they experience around them. Food Not Bombs is eager to welcome you to our table. Help us make a world where no one needs to stand in a line to eat at a soup kitchen, and everyone has the health care, education, housing, and dignity they desire. Into Media Class at the Korogocho Community in Kenya. Young woman holds the meal donated by Nairobi Food Not Bombs. Appendix. The eight founders of the Food Not Bombs movement, the eight founders of Food Not Bombs are Mira Brown, C.T. Lawrence Butler, Jesse Constable, Susan Eaton, Brian Feigenbaum, Keith McHenry, Amy Rothstein, and Joe Swanson. Quotes related to Food Not Bombs. They, Food Not Bombs, feel they can manipulate the homeless issue to set the stage for some kind of radical new social order. San Francisco Mayor Art Agnos, August 26, 1988. This policy of non-prosecution is very frustrating and distressing. There are also inherent problems if the department ceases enforcement. Food Not Bombs would no doubt rub it in the face with visible, blatant, and untimely distribution of food. It could result in a chaotic situation and set a dangerous precedent for other groups who refuse to abide by the law. Captain Dennis Martell, February 9, 1990, San Francisco Police Memorandum. Many of those interviewed said the frustration and anger on all sides of the issue is likely to mount unless more money is found for services. Without more money, they say, this fall's skirmish between police and food not bombs could be just mild warnings of conflicts to come. If the homeless were organized, if they received some heavy leadership, you might have social unrest, said Harry DeRider, Director of Social Services for the Salvation Army in San Francisco you might have an uprising. They food, not bombs, never sell the food, but always give it away for free. Again, in over eight years, we have never had any public health related complaints or difficulties with this program. They enjoy broad-based community support. In fact, this group works cooperatively with the city in our mutual agenda of educating the public about the dangers of nuclear war and encouraging peace through nuclear disarmament. Alfred uh, Vellucci, mayor of Cambridge, in a letter to the city of San Francisco on January 20th, 1989. Since when did feeding the homeless become a terrorist activity? asked ACLU Associate Legal Director Ann Beeson, when the FBI and local law enforcement target groups like food, not bombs, under the guise of fighting terrorism. Many Americans who oppose government policies will be discouraged from speaking out and exercising their rights. Documents obtained by the ACLU expose FBI and police targeting of political groups, May 18, 2005. Food, not bombs is perhaps the best single idea to come out of the anarchist movement in the last 50 years. Eating fossil fuels, oil, food, and the coming crisis in agriculture by Dale Allen Pfeiffer, page 80, New Society Books, 2006. There has to be some kind of police action. At this point, it seems to be a political statement on their part, not a food. Giveaway issue. San Francisco police spokesperson Jerry Senkier, 1988. They don't want to feed the hungry. They just want to make an anarchist-type statement, and we aren't going to allow it. San Francisco police captain Dennis Martell, 1989. San Francisco Chronicle, October 31st, 1988. Against the overwhelming power of corporate wealth and governmental authority, the spirit of resistance was kept alive in the early 90s, often by small-scale acts of courage and defiance. On the West Coast, a young activist named Keith McHenry and hundreds of others were arrested again and again for distributing free food to poor people without a license. They were part of a program called Food Not Bombs. More Food Not Bombs groups sprang up in communities around the country. A People's History of the United States by Howard Zinn. I know Keith McHenry and he's a gentle soul, imperturbable, would never pick a fight with someone, Bernie said. I think it's a matter that the authorities are trying to downplay the voice of opposition to the war. It appears to me that the judges are inclined to support the authority symbols more so than to be open to opinions different from the authority figures. Pat Burney in Tucson, Arizona, on the conviction of Keith McHenry for assault. The Diggers' philosophy influenced the thinking of a young man named Keith McHenry, who would go on to become one of the most important figures in the Freegan movement. McHenry, who is now 53, came from a family with a prestigious pedigree. His ancestor, James McHenry, was one of the signers of the Constitution. Keith McHenry, however, was a nonconformist almost from birth. Throughout his 20 seconds, McHenry traveled the country, dumpster diving and crashing with artists and hippies. The pivotal moment in his life came in 1980, when he was working at an organic food store in Cambridge, Mass. At the end of each day, I was throwing away these crates of produce, apples, lettuce, cabbage stuff that had been bruised or was slightly imperfect in shape, McHenry told me. So he asked his boss if he could distribute this produce at shelters, churches, and soup kitchens. McHenry's efforts were a success, and he helped found Food Not Bombs, a nonprofit whose mission was to salvage discarded but edible food and feed the poor. 
Today, the organization has more than a thousand chapters around the world and has probably been the most active force for spreading the ethos of freeganism. New York Times Magazine, Jake Halpern, June 6, 2010. We don't fault the city of Orlando for being in this dilemma because it really is a national problem. There needs to be a national solution. This is a message to the Orlando city government. We have watched with dismay as all across the USA, more and more cruel and illegal laws have been passed against the homeless street people. Your recent arrest of food, not bombs activists, is the line in the sand, and the People's Liberation Front will tolerate no more. Tomorrow morning at precisely 10 a.m. EDT, the forces of the PLF will remove the Orlando government website from the internet. It will remain a smoking crater in cyberspace for exactly two hours when we will give the ceasefire order and allow it to return to normal function. Consider this a warning. If you persist in the despicable practice of arresting people for feeding other people, we will permanently remove all your official websites from the internet. You have been warned. Do not make us return. Cease your persecution of food, not bombs, and leave the street people alone. Signed, Commander X, PLF, Field Commander. Commander X emailing for the Cyber Protest Group Anonymous on June 17, 2011. The crime should not be feeding more than 25 people, but that more than 25 people need food. Amy Goodman, June 29, 2011. Food Not Bombs Changed My Life. Eric Justin Levinson, SUNY Buffalo, 2010. Food Not Bombs is the coolest thing ever thought up. Thanks so much for starting something so beautiful. Rhonda Vanderzanden, Redding, California, 2011. There are a lot of street kids who have gotten fed healthy meals because of your work. I am not a kid anymore, but I am always on the street or close to being homeless, and I love food, not bombs. I even love the name the first time I heard it. Red Riot Dog, 2012, Keith McHenry, as he was being arrested on J. June 1st, 2011, as reported in the Orlando Sentinel. Yes, I think they are food terrorists. I think they are using food or the feeding of the homeless for different purposes. Orlando Mayor Buddy Dyer, June 8th, 2011, Food Not Bombs Banner at A, London, England Meal, Major Events in the History of Food Not Bombs, First Decade of Food Not Bombs, 1980, 1989. May 24th, 1980, Food Not Bombs co-founder Brian Feigenbaum was arrested at the May 24th direct action to stop Seabrook Nuclear Station in New Hampshire, inspiring bake sales to raise money for Brian's defense and the bake sales to buy a bomber. March 26, 1981, Food Not Bombs shares food at its first action, protesting the interlocking directors at the Bank of Boston and local nuclear industry by dressing as hobos and setting up a soup kitchen outside the stock. Holders meeting at South Station with a message that their policies could cause another Great Depression. Over 50 people came to eat. August 6, 1981, First Food Not Bombs March for Nuclear Disarmament, co-sponsored by Cambridge City Council Leaves from Cambridge, Massachusetts. City Hall traveling to Draper Laboratory near MIT, where a volunteer burned the Boston White Pages as an example of all the people who would die in a nuclear attack like the bombing of Japan. August 20, 1981, Food Not Bombs shares food outside a weapons bazaar at Boston University. The day before, we spray-painted the outline of dead bodies on the ground, stenciled mushroom clouds with the word, Today, and wheat-pasted war is murder for profit posters along the route that the weapons buyers and sellers would take from their hotel to the conference hall. October 30, 1981, first night that the first Food Not Bombs banner was used while sharing food at a protest, this time at a torchlight march against Bush speaking at MIT. December 20, 1981, Walk for Peace, organized by Food Not Bombs, marches down Massachusetts Avenue through Harvard Square on one of the coldest days of the winter. May 2, 1982, the free concert for nuclear disarmament in Synod Park. Cambridge, Massachusetts, organized by Food Not Bombs. June 12, 1982, Boston Food Not Bombs shares food with thousands of protesters in Great Lawn in Central Park, New York, during the second United Nations special session on nuclear disarmament. May 7, 1985, Food Not Bombs helps organize the occupation of the JFK Federal Building in Boston with Pledge of Resistance in a protest against the war in El Salvador, and provided food to many of the 500 protesters that sat in the lobby. October 29, 1985, Food Not Bombs organizes the Boston Pea Party to protest President Reagan's new drug testing laws, mailing urine collected outside the federal building in Boston. October 23, 1986, Boston Food Not Bombs organizes the Welcome to Kenmore Square Meals to defend the rights of the homeless during the American League playoffs and World Series between the Red Sox and Mets. March 11, 1988, San Francisco Food Not Bombs participates in its first action by feeding the protesters at the Reclaim the Test Site action at Mercury, Nevada at the gate of the Nevada Nuclear Test Site. Over 8,000 people participated, and nearly 3,000 were arrested during the action, making it a record for most civil disobedience arrests in a single protest. A giant banner saying Food Not Bombs was placed across Ground Zero held down with rocks. August 15, 1988. The first nine Food Not Bombs volunteers arrested for sharing meals at the entrance to Golden Gate Park in San Francisco, California. August 22, 1988. Police arrest 24 volunteers for making a political statement by sharing free food with the hungry at Haight and Stanion Streets in San Francisco. September 4, 1988. 54 Food Not Bombs. Volunteers arrested for making a political statement by sharing free food at the entrance to Golden Gate Park in San Francisco, California. September 6, 1988, Mayor Art Agnos issues San Francisco Food Not Bombs a temporary permit to share food at the entrance to Golden Gate Park. September 27, 1988, San Francisco police memo written by Officer Richard Holder reporting that he was able to gain information about an October 15th protest against the war in El Salvador by wiretapping the Food Not Bombs. Telephone. 
October 15, 1988, Food Not Bombs, co-founder Keith McHenry arrested and beaten after sharing food with protesters at a demonstration in San Francisco against the war in El Salvador. June 28, 1989, Food Not Bombs starts to share meals 24 hours a day in solidarity with the homeless at their tent city protest outside San Francisco City Hall. July 16, 1989, 11 Food Not Bombs volunteers arrested sharing food at San Francisco City Hall in defiance of a court order because of the group's support of the tent city protest. September 11, 1989, San Francisco Department of Public Health Issues first permit to operate number D2258 to certify food, not bombs field kitchen at Golden Gate Park. October 17, 1989, San Francisco Food Not Bombs feeds the survivors of the Loma Prieta earthquake in Civic Center Plaza for three days, even sharing meals with the police ending this round of arrests. Second decade of Food Not Bombs, 1990-1999. March 13, 1990, San Francisco Department of Public Health issues second permit to operate, number D2260, to certify food not bombs field kitchen at Civic Center Plaza. June, July, 1990, food not bombs provides food at the Earth First. Base camp during Redwood summer in the forests of Northern California. July 19, 1990, the San Francisco Recreation and Parks Department deletes the permit process for sharing free food in city parks in resolution 15,585, section one, subsection of four. September 13, 1990, Food Not Bombs co-founder Keith McHenry beaten and injured in an elevator of police headquarters in San Francisco. January 17, 1991, San Francisco Food Not Bombs starts to feed hundreds at Civic Center Plaza protesting Desert Storm as the giant Food Not Bombs. Banner travels up the Bay Bridge and throughout the city as tens of thousands. Blockaded the federal building for five days and others blockaded the Pacific Stock Exchange. Food Not Bombs groups provide meals at local actions in a number of other cities in the United States and Canada. June 24, 1991, San Francisco police rush up to a rally against healthcare budget cuts, smash Gloria Riva's head into a stone wall as the officers beat and injured Food Not Bombs co-founder Keith McHenry. As he was requesting signatures on postcards, asking to be placed on the next Recreation and Parks Department agenda, March 22, 1991, Food Not Bombs wins first civil contempt of court case before Judge Daniel Hanlon in San Francisco and then police arrest Richard Edmondson, Keith McHenry, Eric Warren, and Tom Osher during a police riot where those jailed were accused of stealing a gun from Officer Brodnick. March 3, 1992, first anti-police brutality protest one year after the videotaped beating of Rodney King. Van Jones's first arrest at San Francisco March nearly reached police headquarters. September 1, 1992, first edition of Food Not Bombs, How to Feed the Hungry and Build Community, published by New Society Press in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. October 7, 1992, first International Food Not Bombs gathering held in San Francisco, where the three principles of Food Not Bombs were adopted. Free vegetarian and vegan meals without restriction, dedication to nonviolent direct action, and every group autonomous without leaders, and using consensus to make decisions. November 1, 1992, the first Food Not Bombs radio network radio program, Puerto Rico, Nation, State, or Colony. Produced by Richard Edmondson. November 26, 1992. First homes, not jails, occupation of hotel at 90 Golden Gate Avenue. An empty business in the tenderloin of San Francisco to protest Mayor Frank Jordan's anti-homeless policies as he came to have his photo. Taken carving a turkey at Glide Memorial Church on Thanksgiving Day. September 2, 1993. 15 Food Not Bombs volunteers are arrested outside San Francisco City Hall to stop the group's effort to protest the mayor's quality of life enforcement matrix program against the homeless and charged with felony conspiracy to commit a misdemeanor. January 4, 1994, Food Not Bombs co-founder Keith McHenry arrested on his first three strikes charge after being attacked by the mayor's film commissioner, Nick Rumel, while calling a towing company to retrieve the Food Not Bombs truck. January 24, 1994, United Nations Human Rights Commission letter announcing an investigation into human rights violations against Food Not Bombs by the government in the United States. Food Not Bombs shares Christmas meal with over 600 people in Santa Cruz, California in 2013, May 10, 1994. Food Not Bombs co-founder Keith McHenry arrested for felony assault with a deadly weapon against a public official at San Francisco City Hall and possession of stolen property consisting of 24 Berkeley Farms dairy milk. Crates now facing 25 years to life in prison. July 11, 1994, eight arrested on felony charges for sharing food at Civic Center Plaza on the opening day of Food Not Bombs co-founders three strikes trial in San Francisco. September 26, 1994, all nine city councilors of the city of Cambridge, Massachusetts vote to adopt a resolution in support of Food Not Bombs. October 20, 1994, Arcata Food Not Bombs volunteers issued first summons ordering the group to stop feeding the hungry. October 28, 1994, Amnesty International letter about arrest and violence against Food Not Bombs volunteers declares all those arrested would be considered prisoners of conscience and that it would work for their unconditional release if convicted. February 15, 1995, Food Not Bombs co-founder Keith McHenry settles California Three Strikes case ending possibility of a 25-to-life sentence. June 15, 1995, Second International Food Not Bombs gathering held in San Francisco during the 50th anniversary celebration off the United Nations. San Francisco police make over 600 arrests during the gathering. Food Not Bombs sets up first into Media Center to report on the gathering. 
September 2nd, 1995. The Rent is Theft Tour starts at Olympia, Washington with Food Not Bombs co-founder Keith McHenry. Demonstrating the making of tofu spread and sharing the history of Food Not Bombs over a low-watt FM radio station, visiting 35 cities in the United States and Canada. February 25, 1996, Robert Norris Kahn convicted and sentenced to 59 days in jail for handing out food to the homeless without a permit after being arrested, October 1993, outside San Francisco City Hall. October 5, 1997, the Unfree Trade Tour starts at Long Hall in Berkeley, traveling to 60 cities in the United States and Canada, calling for direct action to shut down the next World Trade Organization summit in North America. November 28, 1999, Food Not Bombs helps organize the action against the World Trade Organization meeting in Seattle and provides food to the protesters. December 15, 1999, Los Angeles Food Not Bombs organizer Dan DePasquo was arrested by the Pershing Square Park Rangers and the Los Angeles Police Department. December 26, 1999, seven more Los Angeles Food Not Bombs volunteers arrested sharing food at Pershing Square. Third decade of Food Not Bombs. 2000s, 2010. June 4, 2000, Soupstock 2000, a free concert in Dolores Park in San Francisco, is held to celebrate the 20th anniversary of Food Not Bombs, with over 15,000 people coming to see Fugazi, Tilt, Ali Khan Band, Bonfire Madigan, Vic Chestnut, Michael Franti, Sleater Kinney. February 15, 2001, 19-year-old Long Island Food Not Bombs volunteer, Connor Cash, arrested by the FBI and indicted on the charge of arson conspiracy and first false terrorism case of a Food Not Bombs activist. June 15, 2001, Gothenburg, Sweden, Food Not Bombs co-founder, Hannes Westberg, shot in the chest by police during the protest against the EU summit and jailed for five months. February 7, 2003, the Danish Peace Foundation awards the Danish Peace Prize to Copenhagen Food Not Bombs. February 15, 2003, Food Not Bombs chapters in hundreds of cities shares meals with thousands of people protesting against the U.S. invasion of Iraq. April 19, 2003, Melbourne Food Not Bombs provides meals to the protesters outside South Australia's Baxter Immigration Detention Center near Port Augusta. August 1, 2003, Denver police raid food not bombs house without provocation and eight are arrested. September 10 to 14, 2003, food not bombs volunteers from around the world share food outside the Ritz-Carlton. At the start of the World Trade Organization's meeting in Cancun, Mexico, and provides vegan meals in downtown Cancun to the protesters all week. October 8, 2003, Australian filmmaker Elizabeth Tadic and food not bombs co-founder Keith McHenry arrive in Milan, Italy at the start of the Drop Bush Not Bombs tour. Long Island Food Not Bombs provides over a thousand people a vegan Thanksgiving. November 20, 2003, Food Not Bombs volunteers provide free meals to the protesters at the Free Trade Area of the America Summit in Miami, Florida. March 20, 2004, Tampa Food Not Bombs volunteer Mark Parrish arrested on charges of trespassing in Massey Park in downtown Tampa, Florida while sharing food. March 28, 2004, Tampa Food Not Bombs volunteers James Dunson and Lily Lewis, both USF students, were also arrested on charges of trespassing in Massey Park. April 18, 2004, Tampa Food Not Bombs volunteers, Amberly Banks, James Dunson, and Christopher Ernesto, arrested in jail on charges of trespassing on public property. December 7, 2004, the FBI Joint Terrorism Task Force memo, written on investigation of Denver Food Not Bombs and volunteer Sarah Bardwell, before the national political conventions in Boston and New York. May 18, 2005, since when did feeding the homeless become a terrorist activity? Asked DACLU Associate Legal Director Ann Beeson. When the FBI and local law enforcement target groups like Food Not Bombs, under the guise of fighting terrorism, many Americans who oppose government policies will be discouraged from speaking out and exercising their rights. August 9, 2005, Food Not Bombs volunteers start to provide the food at Cindy Sheehan's Camp Casey in Crawford, Texas, outside Bush's summer home. August 30, 1, 2005, Food Not Bombs volunteers, Dave Raza and Ross Harmon, arrive in New Orleans and start feeding the hungry displaced by Hurricane Katrina. American Red Cross gives out Food Not Bombs toll-free number. November 13, 2005, Food Not Bombs volunteer, Timur Kacharava, Stabbed to death by 8 to 10 neo-Nazis while sharing meals for food not bombs on Ligovsky Prospect in St. Petersburg, Russia. December 7, 2005, in the most serious case of framing food not bombs volunteers as terrorists, FBI agents arrest Chelsea Gerlach, Bill Rogers, Kendall Tankersley, Kevin Tubbs, Daniel McGowan, and Stanislas Meyerhoff. Framed by informants in Operation Backfire. January 13, 2006, food not bombs volunteers, Eric McDavid, Zachary Jensen, and Lauren Weiner. Arrested by FBI and charged with conspiracy toe damage and destroy property by fire and an explosive after the FBI paid an informant $65,000 to frame them. Eric McDavid was sentenced to 19 years even though he was innocent of any crimes. February 14, 2006, 11 food not bombs volunteers arrested and tortured in the Philippines while hitchhiking from Bugias to Sagata, Mountain Province. The food not bombs campaign Sagata 11 wins their freedom after 11 months in prison. March 8, 2006, in a guest lecture at the U.S. Law and National Security Course at the University of Texas School of Law. FBI Supervisory Senior Resident Agent G. Charles Rasner listed in his PowerPoint in the media, Food Not Bombs, and the Communist Party of Texas as three of the ten terrorist watch groups they were infiltrating in Austin. June 11, 2006, 
Food Not Bombs activist Peggy Lee Kennedy, arrested at the meal in Venice, California. August 12, 2006, Food Not Bombs volunteers from groups around Florida provide meals to protesters at the statewide action in Orlando against the Israeli war on Lebanon. January 4, 2007, Food Not Bombs volunteer Helen Hill was murdered by a random intruder at her home in New Orleans. Helen started the Halifax, Nova Scotia, Canada chapter and volunteered with New Orleans Food Not Bombs both before and after Hurricane Katrina. April 4, 2007, Eric Montañez, a member of Orlando Food Not Bombs, arrested sharing food at Lake Eola Park in downtown Orlando, Florida. June 27, 2007, six members of Orlando Food Not Bombs were arrested for drumming outside a fundraiser for Orlando Mayor Buddy Dyer in protest of his support for an ordinance that bans the serving of food in public parks. They were arrested on charges of violating a City of Orlando noise ordinance even though it is not an arrestable offense. August 11, 2007, First International Food Not Bombs gathering outside the United States held near Transcarpathia, Ukraine at the No Border Camp. November 25, 2007, the Pepe Free Food Gang, Jakarta Food Not Bombs, organize huge really, really free market on Buy Nothing Day with people coming from all over Indonesia to participate. March 28, 2008, Food Not Bombs gathering in Nashville draws over 150 volunteers who agree to start more food not lawns gardens and seek ways like homes not jails to address the dramatic increase in food prices and the housing foreclosure crisis. July 5, 2008, Reykjavik Food Not Bombs provides meals at the Eat the G8 Solidarity Action in Iceland. August 29, 2008, Joanne M. Smith, judge of Ramsey County District Court, signed the warrants for raids on the Food Not Bombs cookhouses in Minneapolis. Food Not Bombs houses raided by FBI and Homeland Security. The day before the Republican National Convention, eight volunteers arrested on Patriot Act charges as terrorists. September 26, 2008, Federal Judge Gregory Presnell in Orlando, Florida, rules for the first time in the USA that sharing food with hungry and homeless people in public spaces is expressive conduct protected by the First Amendment. March 6, 2009, Jonathan Gerhardt with the New Mexico Environment Department issue Albuquerque Food Not Bombs with $3,000 fine and arrests. March 13, 2009, East Bay Food Not Bombs volunteer Tristan Anderson shot in the head with a tear gas projectile from around 60 meters by Israeli forces during a demonstration in the West Bank village of Neelan. May 3, 2009, Food Not Bombs volunteer A. Bobman arrested sharing food in Middletown, Connecticut. October 3, 2009, Connecticut General Statute 19A-36 changed to allow Food Not Bombs to share meals without interference by the state as a result of the arrests of the Middletown Food Not Bombs volunteers. December 17, 2009, the 11th Circuit Court of Appeals in Atlanta hears arguments on whether sharing food with hungry and homeless people in public spaces is expressive conduct protected by the First Amendment. Orlando Food Not Bombs was represented by lawyer Jacqueline Dowd, April 24, 2010, Food Not Bombs, Food Not Corporation Solidarity Action for the Victims of Lapindo Makporong Sidoarjo in East Java, Indonesia. May 23, 2010, Boston Food Not Bombs celebrates the 30th anniversary of the movement at Soupstock on the Boston Commons. Concerts also in Europe, Australia, and other areas of the world. July 6, 2010, the 11th Circuit Court of Appeals in Atlanta rules against Orlando Food Not Bombs, claiming the city can restrict the group's right to free expression. August 30, 2010, the 11th Circuit Court of Appeals in Atlanta vacates its July opinion in favor of the city of Orlando and grants a rehearing on Bain on February 15, 2011. March 1, 2011, Andrew Zimmern's Bizarre Foods airs segment on the work of San Francisco food, not bombs on the Travel Channel. April 12, 2011, the 11th Circuit Court of Appeals in Atlanta rules in order number 08 to 16,788 that the city of Orlando can restrict food, not bombs to sharing food and literature to twice a year per park. June 1, 2011, the first three off-29 volunteers arrested for, sharing vegan meals to the hungry in opposition to the city of Orlando's large group feeding law. June 24, 2011, Democracy Now! interviews Orlando Food Not Bombs volunteer Ben Markison and the group's Atomi Cheyenne Elahi about the arrests and legal issues around the city of Orlando and the law against sharing meals with the hungry. July 8, 2011, Food Not Bombs co-founder Keith McHenry freed from the Orange County Jail after 17 days behind bars for sharing food and trespassing at Lake Yola Park. August 15, 2011, Orlando Food Not Bombs invited the city to amend the large group feeding laws to exclude Orlando City Hall from the list of parks where free meals are limited to twice a year. City ignores food not bombs. August 30, 2011, Long Island Food Not Bombs shares nearly 110,000 pounds of food with tens of thousands of people affected by Hurricane Irene. September 17, 2011, Food Not Bombs helps provide food at Occupy Wall Street at Zuccotti Park, New York. October 1, 2011, Food Not Bombs starts to provide free meals to the protesters at the Occupy DC at McPherson Square in Washington, DC. October 6, 2011, Food Not Bombs starts to provide free meals to the protesters at the Human Needs, not corporate greed occupation at Freedom Plaza in Washington, DC. October 16, 2011, St. Petersburg Food Not Bombs and the People Share take down the Russian flag and replace it with a Jolly Roger flag that features a skull and crossbones. With a slice of pie on the mast of the Aurora Cruiser, a national relic and tourist attraction docked in downtown St. Petersburg. Books that include Food Not Bombs. 
These books range from detective novels, adventure stories, young adult books, interviews, and books of nonfiction. Food Not Bombs, How to Feed the Hungry and Build Community. Keith McHenry and C.T. Butler, Italian, French, Russian, and several Spanish editions, A People's History of the United States. Howard Zinn, No Trespassing. Anders Core Interviews with Icons, Lisa Law Vegan with a Vengeance, Isa Chandra Moskowitz Sun Food Living, A Resource Guide for Global Health, John McCabe. One Can Make a Difference, Ingrid, E. Newkirk, Pita, Food Not Lawns, Heather C. Flores, The Revolution Will Not Be Microwaved, Sandy Ellix Katz Rising Up, Class Warfare in America from the Streets to the Airwaves, Richard Edmondson Walking to Mercury, Starhawk, Where's Home? Jonathan London Homes Not Jails, Michael Steenberg The Bookcase, Stephen Greenleaf Nine Gallons, Susie Cagle. 50 American Revolutions You're Not Supposed to Know, Mickey Z Anarchy Farm, Jane Doe Softly on This Earth, Ethan Smith, My World, Ramblings of an Aging Gutter Punk, by Jeff Ott Tales of a Punk Rock Nothing, Abram Shalom Himmelstein and Jamie Schwesser, Reclaiming San Francisco, History, Politics, Culture, James Brooke, Chris Carlson, and Nancy J. Peters, Eds. Por el reparto del trabajo y la riqueza. Jose Iglesias Fernandez, Eating Fossil Fuels, Oil, Food, and the Coming Crisis in Agriculture, Dale Allen Pfeiffer at Home on the Street. People, Poverty, and a Hidden Culture of Homelessness, Jason Wasserman, and Jeffrey Michael Clare, Recipes for Disaster. The Crime Thing Collective, Black Flags and Windmills. Hope, Anarchy, and the Common Ground Collective, Scott Crow Lost in Space, The Criminalization, Globalization, and Urban Ecology of Homelessness. Randall Amster, Circles of Compassion, Dr. Will Tuttle. Editor, No Bosses, No Masters, Anarchist Perspectives on Animal Liberation, Anthony Nocella, and Richard White. Why are we sharing vegan food? Food not. Vegan for peace. Why are we sharing vegan food? We want you to enjoy the flavor and well-being of a healthy vegan diet that reflects your desire to live a conscientious life. A life that respects the dignity of all living beings, reduces animal suffering, helps slow climate change, protects our fresh water and oceans, and supports the health of you and your family. What is a vegan person? A vegan is anyone who respects all life and seeks to end the exploitation and suffering of all animals. Vegans eat a plant-based diet with nothing coming from animals, no fish, poultry, meat, milk, eggs, or honey. Not a vegan. Person also makes the effort to avoid using leather, wool, silk, and other animal products for clothing or any other purpose. Many vegan. People seek to enjoy whole organic meals cultivated and harvested by farm workers who are treated with respect and paid a living wage. Most vegans also support efforts to protect the rights of all animals by volunteering at sanctuaries and shelters, campaigning to stop genetically engineered crops, and in their support of groups like Food Not Bombs, Farm Animal Rights Movement, PETA, and their local vegan restaurants and grocery stores. It's a healthy choice. A vegan diet or plant-based diet can be balanced and improve your health because it includes fruit, vegetables, and whole grains that have less chemicals, cholesterol, and saturated fat. Vegan diets can be rich in vitamins, antioxidants, and fiber, and they can decrease the chances of suffering from many diseases such as heart disease, stroke diabetes, and many cancers. Can prepare or buy healthy vegan meals for everyone in your family from the youngest children to their great-great-grandparents and everyone in between. A. Vegan diet of whole foods is great for people of all races, cultures, and genders. Many athletes thrive on a complete vegan diet. Everyone can. Enjoy more of a plant-based diet and experience the rewards of better health. A vegan lifestyle is a compassionate way of life. Industrial agribusiness has taken animal suffering to unimaginable levels, with millions of birds living tortured lives in tiny dark cages. Cows forced by the tens of thousands into filthy feedlots or even worse killed brutally soon after birth just because they are not profitable to the dairy industry. Millions of sheep, pigs, goats, and other animals are treated as commodities, suffering brutal lives shortened in unsanitary slaughterhouses by the thousands that they meet. Industry claims that nearly 20,000 animals are slaughtered every minute in the U.S. alone. Along with the suffering of livestock, thousands of animals are murdered for fur and leather or used in experiments. The crowded factory conditions are not only horrific for the animals, but these conditions are responsible for the increase in foodborne illness, the increased failure of antibiotics, heart disease, pain, and other conditions that lead to the suffering of many people who eat these products. It's better for the environment. A vegan lifestyle can be one of the most effective ways to protect the environment. The production of meat is a leading cause of climate change gases. A University of Chicago study found that a typical meat-based diet in the United States generates the equivalent of nearly 1.5 tons more carbon dioxide per person per year than a vegan diet. Livestock industry is responsible for more than 18% of all global greenhouse gas emissions by producing 90 million tons of carbon gas emissions through the use of fossil fuels each year, along with causing over 8% of the most deadly climate change gas, methane, even exceeding all cars, buses, planes, and trains combined. The founders of Food Not Bombs were moved by the details in Francis Morilape's book, Diet for a Small Planet, which noted that a plant-based diet requires around one-third of the land and water needed to produce a typical meat-based diet. Lape also points out that vegetables, grains, and fruits, properly balanced for amino acids, can provide more protein per acre than meat. Each 16 pounds of perfectly edible human food in the form of grain fed to cattle produce only one pound of beef. 4.8 pounds of grain fed to cattle to produce one pound of beef for human beings. An acre of cereals produces five times more protein than an acre devoted to beef production. Scientists at Cornell report that the U.S. could feed 800 million people with grain that is fed to livestock. Uh, 
takes 2,500 gallons of water, 12 pounds of grain, 35 pounds of topsoil, and the energy equivalent of one gallon of gasoline to produce one pound of feedlot beef. Over 10 billion animals are raised on land for meat and dairy every year, often destroying fragile ecosystems. Because of overharvesting fish, all 17 of the world's major fishing areas have reached or exceeded their natural limits. One third of the world's fish catches fed directly to livestock. Animal agriculture is a chief contributor to water pollution. America's farm animals produce 10 times the waste produced by the human population. Many species of wildlife are becoming extinct because of industrial farming, and we are losing our rainforests to corporations like McDonald's and Burger King who require every increasing land to grow feed and graze cattle. Eating more of a plant-based diet is essential in our effort to protect our environment. A vegan diet is delicious. Many cultures have wonderful vegan dishes and also experience less health problems than the meat and dairy-based diets. When Food Not Bombs first started to share vegan meals at our literature tables, people mostly thought that our food was limited to India with their tasty vegetable curries and dihals, or considering Asian cuisine with tofu, tempeh, and rice dishes. However, we found that enjoyable vegan meals could be found in every corner of the world and be introduced to the public. Mediterranean meals of pastas, salads, hummus, baba hanoush, or a Mexican meal with rice and beans on tortillas. The first Food Not Bombs group used the Farm Cookbook, the Book of Miso, Laurel's Kitchen, and the Moosewood Cookbook to guide them in preparing healthy vegan meals. We have many tasty vegan recipes and other resources in our new book, Hungry for Peace, How You Can Help End Poverty and War Food Not Bombs. Please visit our booth and get a copy today or order online at www.foodnotbombs.net. Food Not Bombs, P.O. Box 424, Arroyo Seco, New Mexico 87514, www.foodnotbombs.net.bibliography.foodpolitics. Seed Wars, Cases and Materials on Intellectual Property and Plant Genetic Resources, Keith Aoki, Carolina Academic Press, Durham, North Carolina, 2007. The Food Wars. Walden Bellow, Verso, London, UK, 2009. The Unsettling of America, Culture and Agriculture, Wendell Berry, Sierra Club, 1977. Avon Books, 1978. Sierra Club, San Francisco, California, 1986. The Political Palette, The Blood Root Collective, Sanguinaria Publishing, Bridgeport, Connecticut, 1980. For the Vegetarian and You, Billy Ray Boyd, Tater Hill Press, San Francisco, California, 1987. Food First, Joseph Collins, Ballantine Books, New York, New York, 1977. World Hunger, 12 Myths, Joseph Collins, Grove Press, New York, New York, 1986. The Coming Famine, The Global Food Crisis, and What We Californian Do to Avoid It, Julian Cribb, University of California Press, Berkeley, CA 2010. Food Justice Food, Health and the Environment, Robert Gottlieb, the MIT Press, Cambridge, Massachusetts, 2010. The Revolution Will Not Be Microwaved, Inside America's Underground Food Movements, Sandor Alex Katz, Chelsea Green, White River JCT, VT 2006, Diet for a Small Planet. Francis Moore Lappe, Random House, Inc., New York, New York, 1991. Food Politics, How the Food Industry Influences Nutrition and Health, California, California Studies in Food and Culture. Marion Nestle, University of California Press, Berkeley, CAA, 2002. Stuffed and Starved, The Hidden Battle for the World Food System, Raj Patel, Melville House, Brooklyn, New York, 2008. The Omnivore's Dilemma, A Natural History of Four Meals, Michael Pollan, Penguin Press, New York, New York, 2006. Diet for a New America, California. John Robbins, H.J. Kramer, Novato, CA 1998. Hungry for Peace 163. The Food Revolution, How Your Diet Can Help Save Your Life and Our World. John Robbins, Canary Press, Newburyport, Massachusetts, 2001. Stolen Harvest, The Hijacking of the Global Food Supply. Vandana Shiva, South End Press, Boston, Massachusetts, 2007. Massachusetts Nefestos, On the Future of Food and Seed. Vandana Shiva Editor, South End Press, Boston, MA, 2007. Soil Not Oil, Vandana Shiva, South End Press, Boston, Massachusetts, 2008. Agriculture and Food in Crisis, Conflict, Resistance and Renewal, Brian Tokar and Fred Magdoff, Monthly Review Press, New York, New York, 2010. The World Peace Diet, Eating for Spiritual Health and Social Harm on New York, Will Tuttle, PhD Lantern Books, New York, NY, 2005. Superfoods, The Food and Medicine of the Future, David Wolf, North Atlantic Books, Berkeley, California, 2009 Organizing. Highlander, No Ordinary School, John M. Glenn. University of Tennessee Press, Knoxville, Tennessee, 1996, Refused to Stand Silently By, An Oral History of Grassroots Social Activism in America, 1921 to 1964. Elliot Wigginton, ed. Doubleday, New York, New York, 1991, Gardening. Holy shit, Managing Manure to Save Mankind, Gene Logsdon, Illustrations, Brooke Budner, Chelsea Green, White River Jet, VT, 2010. Food Not Lawns, How to Turn Your Yard into a Garden and Your Neighborhood into a Community, Heather Cobham Flores, Chelsea Green, White River Jet, Vermont, 2006. The One Straw Revolution, An Introduction to Natural Farming, Masanobu Fukuoka, New York RB Classics, New York, NY, 2008. The Backyard Homestead, Produce All the Food You Need on Just a Quarter Acre, Carlene Madigan, Story Publishing, LLC, North Adams, Massachusetts, 2009.
Avant Gardening, Ecological Struggles in the City and the World, Peter Lamborn Wilson and Bill Weinberg, Eds, Autonomedia, New York, New York, 1999. Militarism. War is a force that gives us meaning. Chris Hedges, Anchor, Garden City, New York, 2003. The Permanent War Economy, American Capitalism in Decline. Seymour Melman, Simon & Schuster, New York, New York, 1995. Taking Aim at the Arms Trade, NGOs, Global Civil Society and the World Military Order, Anna Stavrinakis, Zed Books, London, UK, 2010. Animal Liberation, Farm Sanctuary, Changing Hearts and Minds About Animals and Food, Jean Barr, Touchstone, Clearwater, Florida, 2008. The Californias for Animal Rights, Tom Reagan, University of California Press, Berkeley, CA, 2004. Animal Liberation, by Peter Singer, Echo Press, New York, New York, 2001. Environment, The Monkey Wrench Gang, Edward Abbey, Harper Perennial Modern Classics, New York, New York, 2000s. No Immediate Danger, Prognosis for a Radioactive Earth, Rosalie Bertel. Book Publishing Company, Summertown, Tennessee, 2000s. Planet Earth, The Latest Weapon of War, Rosalie Bertel, Quartet Books, London, UK, 2002. Silent Spring, Rachel Carson, Mariner Books, New York, New York, 2002. The Last Hours of Ancient Sunlight Revised and Updated. The Fate of the World and What We Can Do Before It's Too Late, Tom Hartman, Three Rivers Press, New York, New York, 2004. Ecode Fence, A Field Guide to Monkey Wrenching. Bill Haywood Author, Dave Foreman Editor, Edward Abbey Forward. Abzug Press, Chico, California, 1993. A Sand County Almanac Outdoor Essays and Reflections. Aldo Leopold, Ballantine Books, New York, New York, 1986. End of Nature. Bill McKibben, Random House Trade Paperbacks, New York, New York, 2006. Earth, Making a Life on a Tough New Planet, Bill McKibben, Times Books, New York, New York, 2010. Redesigning Life, The Worldwide Challenge to Genetic Engineering, Brian Tokar, Zed Books, London, UK, 2001. Gene Traders, Biotechnology, World Trade, and the Globalization of Hunger, Brian Tokar, Toward Freedom, Burlington, Vermont, 2004. Toward Climate Justice, Brian Tokar and Eirik Iglad, Communalism Press, Porsgren, Norway, 2010. Nonviolence. Three Who Dared, Tom Cohen, Avon, New York, New York, 1971. Gandhi and Autobiography, The Story of My Experiments with Truth, Mahatma Gandhi, Beacon Press, Boston, Massachusetts, 1993. The Essential Gandhi, an anthology of his writings on his life, work, and ideas. Mahatma Gandhi, Vintage, New York, New York, 2002. Where do we go from here, chaos or community? Martin Luther King Jr., Beacon Press, Boston, Massachusetts, 1968. Letter from the Birmingham Jail, Martin Luther King Jr., HarperCollins, New York, New York, 1994. The Autobiography of Martin Luther King Jr., Martin Luther King Jr., Grand Central Publishing, New York, New York, 2001. Peace Pilgrim, Her Life and Work in Her Own Words, Peace Pilgrim, Ocean Tree Books, Santa Fe, New Mexico, 1992. Waging Nonviolent Struggle, 20th Century Practice and 21st Century Potential, Gene Sharp with Joshua Paulson, Extending Horizons Books, Manchester, New Hampshire, 2005. The Politics of Nonviolent Action, Gene Sharp, Porter Sargent Publishers, Boston, Massachusetts, 1973. Direct Action, The Life of the Theater, Julian Beck, City Lights Books, San Francisco, California, 1972. Defending Civil Resistance Under International Law, Francis Boyle, Transnational Publishers, Dobbs Ferry, New York, 1987. Direct Action and Sabotage, Elizabeth G. Flynn and Walker C. Smith, IWW Pamphlets, Chicago, Illinois, 1991. War Resisters League Organizers Manual, Ed Hedeman, Ed. War Resisters League, New York, New York, 1981. Direct Action and Desegregation, 1960-1962, Towards a Theory of the Rationalization of Protest, James H. Lane, Carlson Publishers, Brooklyn, New York, 1989. Civil Disobedience, Henry David Thoreau, first published in 1849, currently Create Space, Seattle, WA, 2009, Poverty and Homelessness. Planet of Slums, Mike Davis, Verso, New York, New York, 2007. The Long Loneliness, The Autobiography of the Legendary Catholic Social Activist, Dorothy Day, Harper Roan, New York, New York, 1996. Nickel and Dimed, On Not Getting By in America, Barbara Ehrenreich, Holt Paperbacks, New York, New York, 2008. Pedagogy of the Oppressed, Paula Freyer, Continuum, London, UK, 2000s. Poor People's Movements, Why They Succeed, How They Fail, Francis Fox Piven, and Richard Cloward Vintage, Vancouver, WA, 1979. Regulating the Poor, The Functions of Public Welfare, Francis Fox Piven, and Richard Cloward Vintage, Vancouver, WA, 1993. Homes, Not Jails. Michael Steinberg, Black Rain Press, San Francisco, California, 1998. At Home, On the Street. People, Poverty, and a Hidden Culture of Homelessness, Jason Wasserman and Jeffrey Michael Clare, Lynn Reiner Publishers, Boulder, Colorado, 2009. Political Philosophy and Theory Rules for Radicals, Saul D. Alinsky Vintage, Vancouver, WA, 1989. ABC of Anarchism, Alexander Berkman, Dover Publications, New York, New York, 2005. Home Economics, 14 Essays, Wendell Berry, first published in 1987, Counterpoint, San Francisco, California, 2009, The Great Turning, From Empire to Earth Community, Barrett Kohler Publishers, SS San Francisco, California, A, 2007. When Corporations Rule the World, Barrett Kohler Publishers, San Francisco, Key, California, A, 2001, TAZ. 
The Temporary Autonomous Zone, Ontological Anarchy, Poetic Terrorism, Hakim Bey. Autonomedia, Anti-Copyright, New York, New York, 1985. Hungry for Peace, 165, Nautopia. Chris Californielson, AK Press, San Francisco, CA, 2008, Necessary Illusions. Thought Control in Democratic Societies. Noam Chomsky, South End Press, Boston, Massachusetts, 1989. The Washington Connection and Third World Fascism, Noam Chomsky, South End Press, Boston, Massachusetts, 1979. Recipes for Disaster. An Anarchist Cookbook, Crime Thine Workers Collective, 2005. Beyond Power, On Women, Men, and Morals, Marilyn French, Ballantine Books, New York, New York, 1,986 are changing sex roles. Phyllis Greenleaf, New England Free Press, Somerville, Massachusetts, 1979, Living My Life, in two volumes. Emma Goldman Cosmo Classics, New York, New York, 2008. Ring Olivio, A Life Played for Keeps, Emmett Grogan, Citadel Press, Secaucus, New Jersey, 1990. Friendly Fascism, The New Face of Power in America. Bertram Gross, South End Press, Boston, Massachusetts, 1980. Living in Truth, Vaclav Havel, Faber and Fabe, London, UK, 1990. Manufacturing Consent, The Political Economy of the Mass Media, with Edward Herman, Pantheon Books, New York, New York, 1988. Steal This Book, Abby Hoffman, Pirate Editions, New York, New York, 1971. Steal This Urine Test, Abby Hoffman and Jonathan Silvers, Penguin Books, New York, New York, 1987. Cauliflower Volume 5, Cauliflower Collective, The Free Print Shop, San Francisco, California, 1980. The Shock Doctrine, The Rise of Disaster Capitalism, Naomi Klein, Picador, New York, New York, 2008. No Logo, 10th Anniversary Edition with a new introduction, Naomi Klein, Picador, New York, New York, 2009. The Conquest of Bread and Other Writings, Peter Kropotkin, Cambridge University Press, Cambridge, UK, 1995. Mutual Aid, A Factor of Evolution, Peter Kropotkin, Dodo Press, Gloucester, UK, 2007. The Long Emergency, Surviving the Converging Catastrophes of the 21st Century, James Howard Kunstler, Atlantic Monthly Press, New York, New York, 2005. My World, Ramblings of an Aging Gutter Punk, Jeff Ott, Hopeless Records, North Hills, California, 2000 Chomsky on Anarchism. Edited by Barry Pateman, AK Press, Oakland, California, 2005. Prairie Fire, Manifesto of the Weather Underground. The Prairie Fire Collective, Berkeley, California, 1968. Small is Beautiful, E.F. Schumacher, Harper and Rowe, New York, New York, 1973. Staying Alive, Vandana Shiva, South End Press, Boston, Massachusetts, 2010. The Spiral Dance, Starhawk, Harper and Rowe, New York, New York, 1979. Rebellion from the Roots, Indian Uprising in Chiapas. John Ross, Common Courage Press, Monroe, Maine, 1995, Zapatistas. Making Another World Possible, Chronicles of Resistance 2000 to 2006. John Ross, Nation Books, New York, New York, 2007. Public Power in the Age of Empire, Arundhati Roy, Seven Stories Press, New York, New York, 2004. The Revolution of Everyday Life, Raoul Von Sijim, Rebel Press, Wellington, New Zealand, 2003, People's History of the United States, 1492 to Present. Howard Zinn, Perennial Classics, New York, New York, 2003 Classical Literature. The Wretched of the Earth, France, Omar Fanon, first published 1961, Grove Press, New York, New York, 2005. The Autobiography of Malcolm X, Alex Haley, Amiron Unlimited. Mattituck, New York, 1998. Roots, The Saga of an American Family, Alex Haley, Vanguard Press, New York, New York, 2007. The Trial, Franz Kafka, first published in 1925. Schocken, New York, New York, 1995. Brave New World, Aldous Huxley, first published in 1932, Harper Perennial, New York, New York, 1998. The Jungle, the uncensored original edition, Upton Sinclair, C-Sharp Press, Tucson, Arizona, 2003. 1984, George Orwell, New American Library, New York, New York, 1961. The Grapes of Wrath, John M. S. Steinbeck, Jr., Dramatist Play Service, New York, New York, 1998. Walden, Life in the Woods, Henry David Thoreau, 1854. Create Space Seattle, WA, 2010 Free Radio. Rising Up, Class Warfare in America from the Streets to the Airwaves, Richard Edmondson, Lee Brad Press, San Francisco, California, 2000s. Seizing the Airwaves, a free radio handbook, Stephen Junifer, AK Press, San Francisco, California, 2001 Cookbooks. The New Farm Vegetarian Cookbook, Louise Hagler, Dorothy R. Bates, Book Publish a Wine Company, Summertown, Tennessee, 1988. The Cookbook for People Who Love Animals, Michael Cowper, Gentle World, Kapaow High, 1981. The Enchanted Broccoli Forest, Molly Katzen, 10 Speed Press, Berkeley, California, 1995. Moosewood Cookbook, Molly Katzen, 10 Speed Press, Berkeley, California, 2000s. Back to Eden, Jethro Kloss, Woodbridge Press, Santa Barbara, California, 1972. Vegan with a Vengeance, over 150 delicious, cheap, animal-free recipes that rock. Isachandra Moskowitz, De Capo Press, Cambridge, Massachusetts, 2005. Laurel's Kitchen, a handbook for vegetarian cookery and nutrition. Laurel Robertson, Nilgiri Press, Berkeley, California, 1971. The Vegetarian Epicure, Ann Thomas, Vintage Books, New York, New York, 1972. The Book of Miso, William Shirtliff and Akiko Aoyagi, 
Ballantine Books, New York, New York, 1976. Unprocessed. How to Achieve Vibrant Health and Your Ideal Weight, Chef AJ. CreateSpace Independent Publishing Platform, Los Angeles, California, 2011. The Health Promoting Cookbook, Alan Goldhamer, DC, Book Publishing Company, Summertown, Tennessee, 1997. Bravo. Ramsey's Bravo, Book Publishing Company, Summertown, Tennessee, 2012. Food, not bombs. The money spent by the world on weapons in one week is enough to feed all the people on Earth for a year. When millions of people go hungry each day, how can we spend another dollar on war? More than 25,000 people die because of hunger every day. If you feel that people need food more than bombs, we invite you to call us today. The next few years could profoundly change the world for generations. And Food Not Bombs is working to make those changes positive for everyone. We are an all-volunteer movement with autonomous groups active in the Americas, Asia, Africa, Europe, the Middle East, New Zealand, and Australia. We welcome your help. Food Not Bombs is organizing several projects in your community. Free food distribution to local people in need. Literature tables to provide information about food, peace, and justice. Providing hot vegan meals at demonstrations and events. Organizing creative actions in protest to war, poverty, and environmental destruction. We invite you to work with us to provide desperately needed services and information to our community. You can make a difference. Food Not Bombs, P.O. Box 424, Arroyo Seco, New Mexico, 87514 USA, 1800884-1136. www.foodnotbombs.net.foodnotbombs.yourcontact.www.foodnotbombs.net. Food Not Bombs, 1-800-884-1136, www.foodnotbombs.net.foodnotbombs.yourcontact.www.foodnotbombs.net. Food Not Bombs, 1-800-884-1136, www.foodnotbombs.net. Cook for Peace. When a billion people go hungry each day, how can we spend another dollar on war? Food Not. Bombs is an all-volunteer movement that recovers. Food that would otherwise be discarded and shares free vegan meals with the hungry in over 1,000 cities. Around the world in protest to war, poverty, and destruction of the environment. We also provide food and supplies to the survives of natural disasters and people participating in occupations, strikes, marches, and other protests. Food, not bombs, is not a charity, but seeks to end the crisis of corporate domination and exploitation through nonviolent direct action so no one is forced to stand in line to eel at a soup kitchen or live in the streets. We have no formal leaders and strive to include everyone in our consensus decision. Our making process. Each group recovers food that would otherwise be discarded, prepares frosh hot, vegan meals that are shared in visible public spaces with everyone, without restriction and distribute groceries, clothing, and other supplies with the community. The Fisk Group was formed in Cambridge, Massachusetts in 1980 by eight college aged anti clear activists. A second group was started San Francisco in 1988, where the police started to. Saint our volunteers for the crime of making a political stasiment making over 1,000 arrests. The police have also arrested our volunteers for voting the hungry in a month or of other cities in the United States, including Mickletown, Connecticut, Tampa, and Andondo, Florida, Arcata, and Los Angeles, California. Police also made arrests in Bellinus. In 1994, Amnesty International declared that any food not bombs volunteer summons to prison would be considered a prisoners of con saints and that they would work for our unconditional release. Nearly a dozen volumes are currently in prison in the United States, framed or entrapped in FBI plots. Volunteers have shared food at anti-globalization. Protests in many cities, including Seattle, Cancun, Miami, and Toronto. Food Not Bombs organized the food relief effort for the survivors of Hurricane Katrina and Sandy. Volumes also fed the rescue workers. In New York after 9-11, started Animal. Rescue shelters in Slovakia provided food for 100 days during the Orange Revolution in the Ukraine. Red Camp Casey in Texas. Border camps in Palestine, Poland, and Mexico helped change the govum. Ment of Iceland supported kitchens at hundreds of occupations, including Occupy Wall Street, Boston, Washington, D.C., Moscow, and Budapest. Food Not Bombs works in coalition with groups like Earth First, Farm Animal Rights, Movement. The IWW and AMI Racist Action Food Not Bombs activists have stated projects like Indomedia, Bikes Not Bombs, Homes Not Jails, Food Not Lawns, The Free Radio, Movement, Really Really, free markets, anarchists against the wall, and many other grassroots efforts. The movement has a 184-page book, Hungry for Peace. That provides the information to help people start and maintain a local food not bomb chapter. Acopy is available on the website. You can join Food Not Bombs in taking direct action towards creating a world free from domination, coercion, and violence. Food is a right, not a privilege. Solidarity, not charity. Food Not Bombs, P.O. Box 424, Arroyo Seco, N.M., 87,514 USA, 1-800-884-1136, www.foodnotbombs.net.cook, for peace. When a billion people go hungry each day, how can we spend another dollar on war? 
food not, bombs is, and all, volume, movement that recovers, food that, would otherwise be discarded, and shares free vegan meals with the hungry in over 1,000 cities around the world in protest to war, poverty, and destruction of the environment. We also provide food and supplies to survivors of natural disasters and people participating in occupations, strikes, marches, and other protests. Food Not Bombs is not a charity, but socks to end the crisis of corporate domination and exploitation through nonviolent direct action so no one is forced to stand in, line to cat at a soup kitchen or live. In the streets, we have no Kamal leaders and strive to include everyone in our consensus decision making process. Each group recovers food that would otherwise be disgusted, prepares fresh hot vegan meals that are shared in visible public spaces with everyone without restriction and distributes groceries, clothing, and other supplies with the community. The first group was formed in Cambridge, Massachusetts in 1980 by eight college aged anti clar activists. A second group was stained San Francisco in 1988 where the police started to amest est our volunteers for the crime of making a political statement, making over 1,000 ass. The police have also arrested our volumers for feeding the hungry in a number of other cities in the United States, including Middletown, Connecticut, Tamps and Odondo, Florida, Arata, and Los Angeles, California. Police also made arrests in Belarus in 1994 amnesty. Immimational declared that any food not bombs volunteer sentenced to prison woe. Kadih Hensidered, a prisoners of con, science, and that they would work for our unconditional release. Nearly a dozen volunteers are currently in prison in the United States, famed or entrapped in FBI plots. Volunteers have shared food at anti-globalization protests in many cities, including Seattle, Cancun, Miami, and Toronto. Food Not Bombs organized the food relief effort for the survivors of Hurricane Katrina and Sandy Volumisers also fed the rescue work ands in New York after 9-11 started animal. Rescue shelters in Slovakis provided food for 100 days during the Orange Revolution in the Ukraine, Efod Camp Casey in Texas, border camps in Palestine, Poland, and Mexico helped change the govern. Ment of Leland supported kitchens at hundreds of occupations, including Occupy Wall Street, Boston, Washington, D.C., Moscow, and Budapest. Food Not Bombs works in coalition with groups like Earth First, FAM, Animal Rights Movement, the IWW, and Anti-Racist Action. Food Not Bombs activists have started projects like Indomodia, Bikes Not Bombs, Homos Not, Jabes, Food Not Lawns, the face radio movement, really, really, free markets, anarchists against the wall, and many other grassroots efforts. The move meme has a 184-page book, Hungry for Peace, that provides the information to help people start and maintain a local food, not bombs chapter. Akapi is available on the website. You can join food, not bombs, in taking direct action towards creating a world feist from domination, coercion, and violence. Food is a right, not a privilege. Solidarity, not charity. Food, not bombs. P.O. Box. 424, Arroyo, Seco, New Mexico, 87514 USA, 1800884-1136, www.foodnotbombs.net.have, dot food not bombs, m food not bobs, food not bombs, food not bombs, food not bombs. P.O. Box 424, Arroyo Seco, New Mexico, 87514 USA, 1800884-1136, www.foodnotbombs.net, food not bombs. P.O. Box 424, Arroyo Seco, New Mexico, 87514 USA, 1-800-884-1136, www.foodnotbombs.net, Hungry for Peace 169, enjoy a free meal with Food Not Bombs, enjoy a free meal with Food Not Bombs, days of week and time of meal, location of the meals, everyone welcome, Food Not Bombs, phone or email of your chapter, www.foodnotbombs.net, days of week and time of meal, location of the meals, everyone welcome. Food, not bombs. Or phone or email of your chapter. www.food.bombs.net. Enjoy a free meal with dot food, not dot bombs. Dot. Enjoy a free meal with food, not bombs. Days of week and time of meal. Location of the meals. Everyone welcome. Food, not bombs. Phone or email of your chapter. www.food.bombs.net. Days of week dot and time of meal. Dot. Location of the meals. Everyone welcome. Food, not bombs. Phone or email of your chapter www.foodnotbombs.net.foodnotbombs.yourcontact.www.foodnotbombs.net Item, receipt for food, donated, to, food not bombs, amount, cost, item. Receipt for food donated, to, food, not bombs, amount, cost. www.foodnotbombs.net.food.not Bombs, PO, Box 424, Arroyo Seco, NM, 87514, USA, not bombs, Ox, food, USA.
USA, www.foodnotbombs.net.hungry for peace, 171.solidarity, not charity. More than a meal, a meal with a message. The purpose of Food Not Bombs is to encourage a dialogue about social change with the public while providing five healthy vegan or food to everyone without restriction. It has never been more important to encourage the general public to join us in finding solutions to the political, economic, and environmental crises that threaten our future, having literature and a bar in the most visible location possible during every meal also provides a safe place for everyone to enjoy a tasty meal without the stigma. One may feel eating at a charity. You will feed many more people, get more volunteers and food donations and encourage more participation in local events and projects. If you always have a banner and literature at your meals, if you don't have a banner and literature, people passing by will assume you are a church group. They won't volunteer knowing that they are not in your church and you will give the public the impression that you believe poverty is caused by personal failing. Our name, our name, Food Not Bombs, makes it clear that we believe that we could end hunger and poverty if we redirected our resources from the military and other wasteful programs to healthcare, education, and social needs. The fact identify that we are a global effort to change society with shared values, that there are hundreds of groups sharing the name Food Not Bombs helps people. Location. Choose a location where the most people will walk by. If you place your literature and food near train or bus stations, public buildings, or at the entrance to a park where the most people possible are likely to pass, you will reach many more people. Location. Where very few people pass by, you will have little impact and reduce the helping build a much stronger movement if you set up in the center of a park or other number of people that come to cat time and day if you choose a time when the most people possible pass by you will also increase the group's effectiveness and provide food to many more people literature for two hours or more it will encourage deeper conversations and inspire the best times might be noon to 2 p.m or 4 to 6 p.m if you share food and is supporting it is also important to arrive on time this shows respect to the people, participation in the other valuable projects and actions for social change your chapter, depending on your food and in turn, the community will respect your chapter and be, be important. Many downtown areas are empty of people on Sundays, more willing to join you in protests and other projects. The day of the week may also banners or signs always bring at least one banner or sign that says food, not bombs. Let's the public know that you are seeking to change society so that no one is forced to eat at a soup kitchen if you don't have a banner or sign people will assume you are a charity and it will reinforce the idea that there is no solution to hunger and poverty place the banner and signs in a location where as many people as possible can see it the police take the literature and banners to silence the message of food not bombs literature your literature will Encourage conversations about the important issues facing your community and can inspire participation to take action to change society. If one or more of your flyers includes your group's contact information, it will help increase the number of volunteers and food donations. You can ask other community groups to provide you with a stack of flyers about upcoming events or information about local issues. Many people passing by may have no idea that there are organizations working to change society since our issues are almost never reported on by the corporate media for many people the food not bombs literature table is their first introduction to social change people will visit to get informed this will also increase participation in your regular meals concerts protests and other community projects cultural events and groceries you can include music, puppet shows, and other creative cultural activities at some point during your regular meals. This will decrease the feeling that you are a charity and encourage people passing by to enjoy your meal. Your cultural event can be an entertaining way to encourage the public to participate in changing society. The corporate media is bombarding the public with misinformation, so it takes persistence and care to reach as many people as possible with an alternative. You can also bring free groceries to share while the suggestions on this flyer may seem simple. You will discover that by adopting these ideas, you will experience a huge change in your community.
community, the magnitude of problems. We are facing are too great to ignore and the regular food not. Bomb's meal done well with banners, literature, and cultural events at a high visibly location can make a huge difference. With over a billion people going hungry each day, how can we spend another dollar on? War? Food is a right, not a privilege. WW Foodnethem. Net floor HTML 18008841136. The basic food, not bombs table. Food, literature, and a banner. Food, not bombs. A. Hot soup, wet, keep away from literature. B. Salad or other dry food. C. Bread and bagels, D. Salt or other spices. E. Spoons or forks, F. Flyers, book and stickers. G. Donation can. H. Buttons. Donations. Vegetarian. Food, food, not bombs. No choice jobs. D. War for, for all, not jails. Oil. Stand up a food. Cook for. F. For your peace bombs. Peace rights. E. Suggest line pass by literature before the food so less food is spilled on the flyers. G. A. Flow. Chart. For the use of consensus. 2. Make. Decisions. Sample meeting agenda. Date of, the meeting facilitators, name and phone, number, note, keepers, name and phone, number, time, keepers, name, 7 to 7, 10, introductions, agenda, review, 7, 10 to 7, 30, food, collection for the week, 7, 30 to 7, 45, cooks and kitchen locations, 7, 45 to 8, servers, literature, table staff and cultural programs, at the meals, 8 to 8, 15, this week's cleanup, schedule, 8, 15 to 8, 30. Solidarity. Actions to support and provide food for 8.30 to 8.45. Promotion for group with flyers, or territory, tables, media, web, postings, and emailing 8.45 to 9. Financial report on income and expenses and benefit. Concerts and events 9 to 9.15. Communication. Report of groups, emails, phone, messages, and mail 9.15 to 9.30. Critique meeting. Restate tasks each has agreed to do during meeting and Choose, date, time, location, and facilitator of next meeting, Food Not Bombs, P.O. Box 424, Arroyo, Seco, New Mexico, 87,514 USA, 1800884 1136www.foodnotbombs.net. First meeting, introduce proposal. First discussion of proposal. Call for, concerns, restate, proposal. Send to second meeting or commit. Second meeting, reintroduce proposal. Second discussion of proposal. Call for concerns, restate refined, proposal, ask for, stand asides, or blocks, seeing, no, blocks, the proposal, IS adopted, the proposal, IS implemented, ask for, questions, to, clarify proposal, ask for, clarification, of, restated, proposal, ask for, questions, to, improve, proposal, ask for, questions, to, Clarify proposal. Ask for clarification of restated proposal. Proposal IS restated. Ask for clarification of restated proposal if blocked or has many. Stand asides. Restate proposal and send to next meeting or to commit to improve regular meetings using consensus regular meetings using the consensus process provide access for everyone to participate fully in the activities of your group. The consensus process encourages creative, itty, equality, and a Commitment to the implementation of every decision. Consensus encourages the adoption of the decision that most reflects the desires of everyone in your group seeking to adjust each proposal based on the ideas of everyone concerned. Give each proposal a couple of meetings to consider to create the most effective DESI. Scions, the consensus process can be the foundation for social change in your community. After years of practicing the use of con, census, your group will be prepared to fill the power vacuum created by the collapse of the current political and economic system. Introduce the proposal. Open a discussion on the proposal. Ask for concerns. Restate the proposal based on the input from the discuss. Scion and ask if there are any blocks or stand. Asides. If there are no blocks and few stand. Asides. The proposal is adopted. Or someone should only block it. They believe the proposal is contrary to the principles of the group. Payo. Please stand aside if they are not excited or able to help. Implement the proposal. If there are a number of stand asides or blocks, find out what changes would be needed to lift the block or stand asides. One or more blocks stops a proposal from being adopted. Stand asides do not stop the group from consensus community wide decision making using consensus. Each affinity group sends their proposals to their cluster meeting of all local affinity groups. Representatives of each affinity group introduce proposals adopted by their affinity groups. Once each affinity group comes to consensus on the proposals adopted at the cluster meeting, those proposals may be sent by the cluster to the spokes council meetings. The proposals adopted by the spokes council can be sent to the cluster for adoption, then back to the affinity group 
if the affinity groups come to consensus on the proposal, it can be sent back to the cluster and spokes council where it is implemented by the entire community. Affinity groups send two or more people to the cluster and spokes council meetings, homes, not jails, affinity group meeting, free school affinity group meeting, people of color caucus meeting, food, not bombs, affinity group meeting, Intermediate affinity, group meeting, cluster meetings. A cluster could be affinity groups in a town, state, or other geographic areas. It could also be affinity. Groups working in the same or related tasks like food, art, music, first aid, media, or protest. Cluster a meeting, food, not lawns, affinity. Group meeting, bikes, not bombs, affinity. Group meeting, spokes council. Earth first, affinity group meeting. Cluster meeting, cluster C, cluster A. Meeting, meeting, spokes council meetings. Cluster meeting, cluster meeting, cluster F meeting, cluster, a spokes council meeting can be formed by groups of clusters, affinity group meeting, H meeting, food, not bombs, PO, box 424, Arroyo Seco, New Mexico, 87514 USA, 1800884 www.foodnotbombs.net.food, not bombs, weekly schedule, pickups, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, solidarity. Deliveries, kitchens, cooks, servers for the week of literature. Clean up 176 Hungry for Peace. Food Not Bombs, P.O. Box 424. Arroyo Seco, New Mexico, 87514 USA, 1800884 www.foodnotbombs.net. Daily activity, log your group's meal number since starting. Date weather. Name or city of food, not bombs, chapter name, and phone number of coordinator food pickups. Location day, time volunteer. Location day, time volunteer. Location day, time volunteer. Type of event, regular meal, solidarity. Starting time for cooking. Kitchen location. Names of cooks, 1, 2, 3, 5, 2,345. Starting time for sharing meal, meal location. Amount of money donated, number of people eating menu. Uh, finish time for cooking. Names of volunteers sharing, 1, 2, 233, 4, 5. Ending time of meal. Amount spent. Number of bags of groceries distributed. Clean up. Approximate weight. Starting time. Ending time name of cleaning volunteers. 1, 2, 3, 4. Additional notes on back yes, no signature. M, what's wrong with McDonald's? McDonald's spend over $2 billion every year worldwide on advertising and promotions, trying to cultivate an image of being a caring and green company that is also a fun place to eat. Children are lured and dragging their parents behind them with the promise of toys and other gimmicks, but behind the smiling face of Ronald McDonald lies the reality. McDonald's only interest is money, making profits from whoever and whatever they can, just like all multinationals. The company's sales are now $40 billion a year. The continual worldwide expansion of fast food chains means more uniformity, less choice, and the undermining of local communities, promoting unhealthy food. I'm killing it. McDonald's promote their food as nutritious, but the reality is that it is processed junk food, high in far, sugar and salt, and low in fiber and vitamins. 80s of this type is linked with a greater risk of heart disease, cancer, diabetes, and other diseases. Their food also contains many chemical additives, some of which may cause ill health and hyperactivity in children. Modern immersive farming and production methods are geared to maximizing profits. As a result, the widespread use of unnatural practices and chemicals has also affected people's health, e.g. BSE and food poisoning. Exploiting workers. Workers in the fast food industry are paid low wages. McDonald's do not pay Osenime rates even when employees work very long hours pressure to keep profits high and wage costs low results in understaffing. So staff have to work harder and faster. As a consequence, accidents, particularly bumses, are common. The majority of employees are people who have few job options and so have no alternative to being bossed around and exploited, and they're compelled to smile too. Not surprisingly, staff turnover at McDonald's is high, making it virtually impossible to unionize and fight for a better deal. This suits McDonald's, who have always been opposed to workers' rights and unions. The same is true for workers toiling in sweatshops in China to produce McDonald's Happy Meal toys, robbing the poor. The demands made by multinationals for cheap food supplies result in the exploitation of agricultural workers throughout the world. Vast areas of land in poor countries are used for cash crops or for cattle ranching or to grow grain to feed animals to be eaten in the West. This is at the expense of local food needs. McDonald's continually promote meat products, encouraging people to eat meat more often, which wastes more and more food resources. 7 million tons of grain fed to livestock produces only I million tons of meat and byproducts. On a plant-based diet and with land shared fairly, almost every region could be self-sufficient in food, damaging the environment. Forests throughout the world, vital for all life, are being destroyed at an appalling rate by multinational companies. McDonald's have at last been forced to admit to using beef reared on ex-rainforest land, preventing its regeneration. Also, the use of farmland by multinationals and their suppliers forces local people to move on to other areas and cut down further trees. McDonald's are the world's largest user of beef. Methane emitted by cattle, reared for the beef industry, is a major contributor to the global warming crisis. The heavy use of chemicals in modern agriculture destroys wildlife, plants, and the soil. Every year, McDonald's use over a million tons of unnecessary plastic and paper packaging. 
the production of which requires environmentally damaging chemicals and degradation of forests. Most of the packaging ends up littering our streets or polluting the land buried in landfill sites. Cruelty to animals. The menus of the burger chains are based on the torture and murder of millions of animals. Most are intensively farmed with no access to fresh air and sunshine and no freedom of movement. Their short lives are cruel and their deaths are barbaric. Humane slaughter is a myth. We have the choice to eat meat or not, but the billions of animals slaughtered for food each year have no choice at all. Or what you can do. Food is central to our everyday lives, yet we have virtually no control over its production and distribution. The way we eat, and even the way we think about food, is being manipulated by these powerful institutions and their sophisticated marketing campaigns. But despite strenuous marketing efforts, McDonald's is widely despised, and its reputation along with that of the food industry in general, continues to sink ever further. Every year, on 16th October, there is an annual World Day of Action against McDonald's, and all they stand for with pickets and demonstrations all over the world. Together, we can fight back against the institutions which currently control our lives and our planet, and we can create a better society without exploitation or oppression. Workers can and do organize together to fight for their rights and dignity. People are increasingly aware of the need to think seriously about the food we and our children eat. Environmental and animal rights protests and campaigns are growing everywhere. People in poor countries are organizing themselves to stand up to multinationals and banks which dominate the world's economy. Why not join in the struggle for a better world? Talk to friends and family, neighbors, and workmates about these issues. Please copy and circulate this leaflet as widely as you can. McLeibel Support Campaign, 5 Caledonian Road, London, N19DX, UK. Tell, fax, email, McLeibel at globalnate.co.uk. Web, www.mcspotlight.org.foodnotbombsp.o. Box, 424, Arroyo Seco, New Mexico, 87514 USA, 114 USA. 1-800-884-1136 www.food.bombs.net w.food.bombs.net.food.not bombs www.food.bombs.net.sign up to help .foodnotbombs.name.mailing address.st.zip.phone first would like to cook see i would like to serve five key i would like to do food pick ups pi would like to staff literature table li would like to hear about events e email address key Hungry for peace. 179. United States Good Samaritan Law. Liability issues. On October 1st, 1996, President Clinton signed the Bill Emerson Good Samaritan Food Donation Act to encourage the donation of food and grocery products to nonprofit organizations for distribution to needy individuals. This law makes it easier to donate. Here's how. It protects donors from liability when donating to a nonprofit organization. It protects donors from civil and criminal liability should the product donated in good faith later cause harm to the needy recipient. It standardizes donor liability exposure. Donors and their legal counsel no longer have to investigate liability laws in 50 states. It sets a liability floor of gross negligence or intentional misconduct for persons who donate grocery products. Congress recognized that the provision of food close to recommended date of sale is, in and of itself, not grounds for finding gross negligence. For example, cereal can be donated if it is marked close to code date for retail sale. The Bill Emerson Food Donation Act. 104th Congress of the United States of America at the second session begun and held at the city of Washington on Wednesday, the third day of January, 1996. An act to encourage the donation of food and grocery products to nonprofit organizations for distribution to needy individuals by giving the model Good Samaritan Food Donation Act the full force and effect of law, be it enacted by the Senate and House of Representatives of the United States of America in Congress assembled. Section 1. Conversion to Permanent Law OD Model Good Samaritan Food Donation Act and Transfer of that act to Child Nutrition Act of 1966. A. Conversion to Permanent Law. Title IV of the National and Community Service Act of 1990 is amended by striking the title heading in sections 401 and 4342, USC 12,671 and 12,673, and in section 4242, USC 72, and the section heading by striking model and in subsection A, by striking Good Samaritan and inserting Bill Emerson Good Samaritan, C in subsection B, 7, to read as follows, 7, gross negligence. The term gross negligence means voluntary and conscious conduct, including a failure to act by a person who at the time of the conduct knew that the conduct was likely to be harmful to the health or well-being of another person. D, by striking subsection C and inserting the following, C, liability for damages from donated food and grocery products. 1, liability of person or gleaner. A person or gleaner shall not be subject to civil or criminal liability arising from the nature, age, packaging, or condition of apparently wholesome food or an apparently fit grocery product that the person or gleaner donates in good faith to a nonprofit organization for ultimate distribution to needy individuals. Two, liability of nonprofit organization. A nonprofit organization shall not be subject to civil or criminal liability arising from the nature, age, packaging, or condition of apparently wholesome food or an apparently fit grocery product that the nonprofit organization received as a donation in good faith from a person or gleaner for ultimate distribution to needy individuals. 
Three, exception. Paragraphs one and two shall not apply to an injury to or a death of an ultimate user or recipient of the food or grocery product that results from an act or omission of the person, gleaner or nonprofit organization, as applicable, constituting gross negligence or intentional misconduct. And E, in subsection F, by adding at the end the following, nothing in this section shall be construed to supersede state or local health regulations. B, Transfer to Child Nutrition Act of 1966. Section 402 of the National and Community Service Act of 1942 USC 12762, as amended by subsection A, is transferred from the National and Community Service Act of 1990 to the Child Nutrition Act of 1966, is redesignated as Section 22 of the Child Nutrition Act of 1966, and is added at the end of such act. C. Conforming Amendment. The Table of Contents for the National and Community Service Act of 1990 is amended by striking the items relating to Title IV. Newt Gingrich, Speaker of the House of Representatives, Strom Thurmond, President of the Senate Pro Tempore, approved October 1, 1996, William J. Clinton, President of the United States, PL 104-210, text provided by Second Harvest, please copy, Occupation, Kitchen, Cooler Cooler, Compost Produce, Washing Bucket Station, Backstock, ASOAP, Rinse, Disinfect. N. Produce cutting, station stoves, literature table plates, bowls, forks, cups, pastries, coffee main course drinks, FF, 0400 EDD, food not bombs, food not bombs, water, three bucket dishwashing, not bombs. This diagram is based on the kitchen at Freedom Plaza in Washington, D.C. The kitchen started on October 6, 2011, sharing meals with hundreds of people every day for months. Food not bombs, P.O. Box 424. Arroyo Seco, New Mexico, 87,514 USA, 1800884-1136, www A food not bombs, tricycle. Food not bombs, food, but miles. Food not bims, free. Food, food not bombs, food not. Food not bombs. P.O. Box, 424. Arroyo Seco, New Mexico, 87,514 USA, www The food not bombs, free school, Taos, New Mexico, USA. Learn how you can change society and build a sustainable future. Share your skills while learning new ideas all for free. Strengthen your impact as an activist. Free workshops include these topics. Analysis of current events and social issues. Bicycle repair and construction. Strategies and methods for campaigns of non-violent direct action. Organic gardening, permaculture skills and practice. Organizing cultural events in support of social change. Natural building and sustainable architecture. Wilderness skills, nature, weather, stars and planets creative writing, music, dance, painting, crafts, and self-expression, sustainable energy production, storage, and implementation, the use of the consensus process, alternative media and communication, logic and patterns, cooking, baking, and food preservation, the food not bombs free school, P.O. Box 424, Arroyo Seco, New Mexico, 87514 USA, 1800884-1136 FNB free school dot org dot in, 45454958 Nine eight methods of nonviolent action. Practitioners of nonviolent struggle have an entire arsenal of nonviolent weapons at their disposal. Listed below are 198 of them, classified into three broad categories nonviolent protest and persuasion, non cooperation, social, economic, and political, and nonviolent intervention. A description and historical examples of each can be found in Volume 2 of The Politics of Nonviolent Action by Gene Sharp, The Methods of Nonviolent Protest and Persuasion. Formal statements 1. Public speeches. 2. Letters of opposition or support. Three, declarations by organizations and institutions. Four, signed public statements. Five, declarations of indictment and intention. Six, group or mass petitions. Communications with a wider audience. Seven, slogans, caricatures, and symbols. Eight, banners, posters, and displayed communications. Nine, leaflets, pamphlets, and books. Ten, newspapers and journals. Eleven, records, radio, and television. Twelve, skywriting and earthwriting. Group representations. Thirteen. Deputations 14, mock awards 15, group lobbying 16, picketing 17, mock elections, symbolic public acts 18, displays of flags in symbolic colors 19, wearing of symbols 20, prayer and worship 21, delivering symbolic objects 22, protest disrobings 23, destruction of own property 24, symbolic lights 25, displays of portraits 26, paint as protest 27, new signs and names 28, symbolic sounds 29, or symbolic reclamations, 30. Rude gestures, pressures on individuals, 31. Haunting officials, 32. Taunting officials, 33. Fraternization, 34. Vigils, drama, and music, 35. Humorous skits and pranks, 36. Performances of plays and music, 37. Singing, processions, 38. Marches, 39. Parades, 40. Religious processions, 41. Pilgrimages, 42. 
Motorcades, Honoring the Dead 43, Political Mourning 44, Mock Funerals 45, Demonstrative Funerals 46, Homage at Burial Places, Public Assemblies 47, Assemblies of Protest or Support 48, Protest Meetings 49, Camouflaged Meetings of Protest 50, Teach-Ins, Withdrawal and Renunciation 51, Walkouts 52, Silence 53, Renouncing Honors 54, Turning One's Back The Methods of Social Non-Cooperation, Ostracism of Persons 55, Social Boycott 56, Selective Social Boycott 57, Lysistratic Non-Action 58, Excommunication 59, Interdict, Non-Cooperation with Social Events, Customs, and Institutions 60, Suspension of Social and Sports Activities 61, Boycott of Social Affairs 62, Student Strike 63, Social Disobedience 64, Withdrawal from Social Institutions, Withdrawal from the Social System 65, Stay at Home 66, Total Personal Non-Cooperation 67, Flight of Workers 68, Sanctuary 69, Collective Disappearance, 70, Protest Immigration Hedrot, The Methods of Economic Non-Cooperation, Economic Boycotts, Actions by Consumers, 71, Consumers Boycott, 72, Non-Consumption of Boycotted Goods, 73, Policy of Austerity, 74, Rent Withholding, 75, Refusal to Rent, 76, National Consumers Boycott, 77, International Consumers Boycott, Action by Workers and Producers, 78, Workmen's Boycott 79, Producers Boycott, Action by Middlemen 80, Suppliers and Handlers Boycott, Action by Owners and Management 81, Traders Boycott 82, Refusal to Let or Sell Property 83, Lockout 84, Refusal of Industrial Assistance 85, Merchants General Strike, Action by Holders of Financial Resources 86, Withdrawal of Bank Deposits 87, Refusal to Pay Fees, Dues and Assessments 88, Refusal to Pay Debts or Interest 89, Severance of Funds and Credit 90, Revenue Refusal 91%. Refusal of a government's money. Action by governments, 92. Domestic embargo, 93. Blacklisting of traders, 94. International sellers embargo, 95. International buyers embargo, 96. International trade embargo. The methods of economic non-cooperation. The strike. Symbolic strikes, 97. Protest strike, 98. Quickie walkout lightning strike. Agricultural strikes, 99. Peasant strike, 100. Farm workers strike. Strikes by special groups, 101. Refusal of impressed labor, 102. Prisoner strike, 103. Craft strike, 104. Professional strike. Ordinary industrial strikes, 105. Establishment strike, 106. Industry strike, 107. Sympathetic strike. Restricted strikes, 108. Detailed strike, 109. Bumper strike, 110. Slowdown strike, 111. Working to rule strike, 112. Reporting, sick, sick in 113. Strike by resignation, 114. Limited strike, 115. Selective strike. Multi-industry strikes, 116. Generalized strike, 117. General strike, combination of strikes and economic closures, 118. Hartal, 119. Economic shutdown, the methods of political non-cooperation. Rejection of authority, 120. Withholding or withdrawal of allegiance, 121. Refusal of public support, 122. Literature and speeches advocating resistance. Citizens non-cooperation with government, 123. Boycott of legislative bodies, 124. Boycott of Elections 125. Boycott of Government Employment and Positions 126. Boycott of Government Departments, Agencies, and Other Bodies 127. Withdrawal from Government Educational Institutions 128. Boycott of Government Supported Organizations 129. Refusal of Assistance to Enforcement Agents 130. Removal of Own Signs and Place Marks 131. Refusal to Accept Appointed Officials 132. Refusal to Dissolve Existing Institutions, Citizens' Alternatives to Obedience 133. Reluctant and slow compliance, 134. Non-obedience in absence of direct supervision, 135. Popular non-obedience, 136. Disguised disobedience, 137. Refusal of an assemblage or meeting to disperse, 138. Sit down, 139. Non-cooperation with conscription and deportation, 140. Hiding, escape, and false identities, 141. Civil disobedience of illegitimate laws. Action by government personnel, 142. Selective refusal of assistance by government aides, 143. Blocking of lines of command and information, 144. Stalling and obstruction, 145. General administrative non-cooperation, 146. Judicial non-cooperation, 147. Deliberate inefficiency and selective non-cooperation by enforcement agents, 148. Mutiny. Domestic governmental action, 149. Quasi-legal evasions and delays, 150. Non-cooperation by constituent governmental units. International governmental action, 151. Changes in diplomatic and other representations, 152. Delay and cancellation of diplomatic events, 153. Withholding of diplomatic recognition, 154. Severance of diplomatic relations, 155. 
Withdrawal from international organizations, 156. Refusal of membership in international bodies, 157. Expulsion from international organizations. The methods of nonviolent intervention. Or psychological intervention, 158. Self-exposure to the elements, 159. The fast. A fast of moral pressure. B. Hunger strike. C. Satyagrahic fast, 160. Reverse trial. 161. Nonviolent harassment. Physical intervention, 162. Sit in, 163. Stand in, 164. Ride in, 165. Wade in, 166. Mill in, 167. Pray in, 168. Nonviolent raids, 169. Nonviolent air raids, 170. Nonviolent invasion, 171. Nonviolent interjection, 172. Nonviolent obstruction, 173. Nonviolent occupation. Social intervention, 174. Establishing new social patterns, 175. Overloading of facilities, 176. Stall in, 177. Speak in 178. Guerrilla theater, 179. Alternative social institutions, 180. Alternative communication system, economic intervention, 181. Reverse strike, 182. Stay in strike, 183. Nonviolent land seizure, 184. Defiance of blockades, 185. Politically motivated counterfeiting, 186. Preclusive purchasing, 187. Seizure of assets, 188. Dumping, 189. Selective patronage, 190. Alternative markets, 191. Alternative transportation systems, 192. Alternative economic institutions. Political intervention, 193. Overloading of administrative systems, 194. Disclosing identities of secret agents, 195. Seeking imprisonment, 196. Civil disobedience of neutral laws, 197. Work on without collaboration, 198. Dual sovereignty and parallel government. Source, Sharp, Gene. The Politics of Nonviolent Action Vols. Boston, Porter Sargent, 1973. Provided courtesy of the Albert Einstein Institution. Acknowledgements. I can't thank enough everyone that helped me during the two years it took to complete this book. My appreciation cannot be limited to just those who helped during the process of writing this book, but extends to the hundreds of people that supported Food Not Bombs during our first 30 years. My deepest appreciation goes out to all the Food Not Bombs activists that shared their experiences and time with me. First, I would like to thank my partner, Abby Samuels, for supporting me during the completion of this book and my work with Food Not Bombs. A special thanks to my publisher, Chaz Booth, my editor, Shauna Williams, who provided valuable input about the direction of this book, as well as correcting my grammar and spelling, and Veronica Golos for helping improve my writing skills. Some of the people and institutions I would like to mention are Andrea McHenry, who spent many sleepless nights worrying on my behalf, and the other co-founders of Food Not Bombs, Joe Swanson, Mira Brown, Susan Eaton, Brian Feigenbaum, Jesse Constable, Amy Rothstein, and C.T. Butler. A special thanks to Eric Weinberger for his more than 20 years of dedication and wisdom that helped make Food Not Bombs what we are today. I would not have been free to work on this book if it were not for the support of David Lewis. Also thanks to Dr. Alan Goldhammer and True North for helping me recover from 19 years of pain. I could not have done any of this without the support of Rich Kaplan, Alex Vitale, Tom Osher, Robert Norse Khan, Dwight Metzger, David Nadell, Beth Sanders, and Randy Baker, Dennis Cunningham, Sky Crosby, Mesfin Halamarium, Priya Workery, Celine Alcock, Alex Hershaft, Anai Rhodes, Bob Wilson, Bobby Castillo, Bridget Osterling, Carla Leshny, Eric Montanez, Ben Markison, Bob Pedersen, Michael Parenti, Chance Martin, Diamond Dave Whitaker, Jello Biafra, David Schlesinger, David Dichter, and Franco Maris of the punk band MDC, Jane Albert, Dr. Alan Antliff. Ivan Murma, Daniel and David Warnock, Dallas Rising and Brandon Nord, Don Moncrief, Lynn Hoff, Douglas Rory, Franny Enid, Irish, George Jarrett, Jerry Flanagan, Dr. Charles Bonfanti, Glenn Gill, Hank Brusselback, uh, Dr. Will Tuttle, Michael, Stoops, Happy Oasis, Ian Doroffy, Idawu Israel, Michael Korn, James Tracy, Jane Schaefer, Jeff Ott, Janelle Holden, Liz Hurwitz, Bob, and Ray Ann Donlin, Jess Grant, Jerry Levy, my faithful Doberman and best friend, Pluto, Jim Noble, Emmanuel Rodriguez, Jesus Israel Rodriguez Alviso, David Miles, Karen Chaffrex, Kathy Kelly, Lori Churchill, Madeline Muir, Marsha Horton, Alastair Murray, Medea Benjamin, Megan Williams, Mickey Z, Dr. Kathy Toy Miller, Nick Cooper, Noah Gray, Peggy Lee Kennedy, Calvin Moss, Chris Ford, Peter Donahue, Peter Cowson, Rachel Dorner, David Solnit, Roly Paroli, Karen Kaufman, Sarah Menefee, Mariposa Bernstein, Swanigal Harajan, Frank Afflito, Thomas Anderson, Tom Mullian, Tracy Walsh, Laura Warren, Stefania, Uncle Don, John and Andy Stepanian, Dennis Bernstein, Jen Riley, Dr. Elliot Katz, Jean Barr, Heidi Bogosia, Will Potter, Helen Hill and Paul Galeunas, Walt Staten, Randall Amster, Hunter Altschul, Starhawk, Gil Giono, Paul Kangas, James Tracy Bill Rogers, Adam Ortberg, Chris Crass, Vincent Scotty Irene, Carl Chatsky, Shannon Murray, John Judge, Alexander Penley, Chris Carlson, Pat Smith, Cullen Scott, Terry Compost, Dennis Perron, Carol Denny, Helen Martin, David Rovix, Jeff Jackson, Heather Flores, Michael Albert, Francis Morlape, Francis Fox Piven, 
Helen Mary Caldicott, Raj Patel, Eric Holt Jimenez, Barbara Ehrenreich, Noam Chomsky Howard Zinn, and so many others, and you know who you are. That made this book possible. I can't thank you enough. I would also like to thank the many cafes, restaurants, parks, and friends that let me overstay my welcome during the writing of this book, including Busboys and Poets, Kosai in Washington, D.C., Mark's Kitchen in Tacoma Park, Tasty Diner in Bethesda and Silver Springs, Wired Cafe, Mondo Culture, The Taos Inn, Elevation Coffee, The Taos Cow, and both the North and South Side Guadalajara Grills in Taos, New Mexico, the Red Cup in Oklahoma City, Epic and Revolutionary Cafes in Tucson, and a string of truck stops, rest areas, state and national park campgrounds all across the United States. And last but not least, Bill Moeller's home in Tucson, Arizona. Thank you one and all. After spending his childhood living at the Grand Canyon, Yosemite, Big Bend, and other national parks, he moved to New England to study painting and sculpture at Boston University. Keith was introduced to the principles of social change by his American history professor, Howard Zinn. While in school, Keith started the advertising firm, Brushfire Graphics, and won several Clio awards. His clients included the Boston Red Sox and the Boston Celtics. Keith designed the Food Not Bombs logo and many of the images associated with the movement. The author. Keith McHenry is one of the original eight anti-nuclear activists that started Food Not Bombs in Cambridge, Massachusetts in 1980. Keith was inspired to help start sharing vegan meals with the hungry when he was trimming produce at Bread and Circus Natural Foods, discarding five or six cases of organic produce every morning. Today, the all-volunteer movement he co-founded shares free vegan meals with the hungry on the streets of over 1,000 cities around the world. Keith's great-great-grandfather's great-grandfather was Dr. James McHenry, who was on George Washington's staff during the War for Independence, signed the United States Constitution, was Secretary of War under both Washington and Adams, helping start the U.S. military. His mother's father, John Vanderpool Phelan, was an OSS officer directing the firebombing of Tokyo, Japan, and proudly claimed that he was responsible for burning nearly a million civilians alive during the Second World War. He also provided flight plans from Burma for the atomic bombing of Hiroshima and Nagasaki and campaigned for the nuclear bombing of Hanoi during the Vietnam War. Keith's father, Douglas Bruce McHenry, tested the explosive S for the Minuteman nuclear missile program in Brigham City, Utah, before becoming a ranger in the National Park Service. After eight years volunteering with Boston Food Not Bombs, he moved to San Francisco, California, and started a second chapter. On August 15, 1988, he and eight other volunteers were arrested for what the police claimed was making a political statement by sharing free meals at the entrance to Golden Gate Park. Keith was arrested another 93 times and spent over 500 nights in jail. He faced 25 to life in prison when he was framed under the California Three Strikes and You're Out law. As a result of San Francisco's campaign of arrests and violence, Amnesty International declared all food not bombs volunteers prisoners of conscience, working for Keith's unconditional release. Keith was beaten by the San Francisco police while volunteering with food not bombs, requiring medical attention and two surgeries. Keith joined the food not bombs volunteers in Florida after the 11th Circuit Federal Court. Of appeals ruled that the city of Orlando could limit food, not bombstow sharing food and literature, to twice a year per park. He was one of 24 volunteers arrested in Orlando for helping provide vegan meals to the hungry. He was held a total of 19 days and faced over a year in the Orange County Department of Corrections. Keith co-authored the book, Food Not Bombs, How to Feed the Hungry and Build Community, which has sold nearly 8,000 copies in English and thousands more in Spanish, French, Italian, and Russian. He hastered the world, helping food, not bombs groups, speaking about the history, principles, and current actions of the global all-volunteer movement. His personal notes, writings, photos, art, designs, legal papers, news accounts, and other materials are archived at the University of Victoria in British Columbia, Canada. Keith lives with his partner and fellow Food Not Bombs volunteer, Abby Samuels, live in both Santa Cruz, California, and Taos, New Mexico, where they volunteer with their local Food Not Bombs groups. Abby and Keith enjoy gardening, biking, hiking, swimming, and sharing meals with the hungry. Keith also draws, paints, and writes articles and books about social justice issues. Keith maintains one of the Food Not Bombs websites and helps coordinate logistics for the Food Not Bombs movement. Keith is eager to support any effort to start or maintain a local Food Not Bombs chapter and encourages the public to contact him to speak at your school or event. The poster used during the first few bake sales, organized by Food Not Bombs, 